recorded on the air today. <gasps> yes, we are, because that is the name of the show. Welcome. I am Sam Delev. This is our Children of Airte after show slash dinosaur fan club. With me are Mesozoic aficionados, Lauren and Adam. Please say hello and introduce yourself to the people and or dinosaur formus in our chat. I guess I'll go first. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I like TTRPGs and doing oboe things and snacks. And my favorite dinosaur is the Stegosaurus. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, I'm Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane, and I also play Silas Jordan. And my favorite dinosaur uh, changes, uh, you know, fairly frequently, to be honest. But um, I uh, think about dinosaurs um, far too much, probably. Um, so right now, because someone asked me this question earlier today, uh, what dinosaur I identify with. And my answer was kind of nostalgic to, you know, uh, my childhood. I'm going to go with the Allosaurus. Ooh. Ooh. It's a good choice. It's a fun thing about the dinosaur thing is there's no wrong choices, right? There's only good flavors of right. That's exactly right. Quite precisely. And likewise, you should not read anything into my affection for Dakota Raptors or Dynamo Terrors. In fact, to distract you from the notion altogether, Let's talk about our sponsors. Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, we're giving away two codes. You can type exclamation point code in chat for a free Electrum chest in game. Die Hard Dice, purveyors of clicky quacky math rocks, including Sam DeLev's Deliverers of Delight. Yes. Because this month I got my own dice name and yes. I am inordinately excited about it. So please partake of joy alongside me by using the code Airte at checkout for a 10% discount. We will also be doing a $20 promotional giveaway in chat during the stream. And Sirenscape, because epic games require epic music and possibly well-timed dinosaur noises. But now that I've made sponsor Adam proud, I get to ask questions of Gamer Adam and of Lauren as well. And so can you by asking your question with question in all caps in chat. Here, I'll start. Last time in our holiday special, and just now, I got to hear everyone's favorite dinosaur, but now that flat dinosaur and Silosaurus are both real categories. Yes. How have your feelings changed? I mean, mine haven't, but Neb's probably has. I don't know about Adam and or Silas. Yeah, I mean, the main thing is um, I, I was reminded so much of kind of when my kids would watch something or read something before I got to it, because I consume a lot of different content in a variety of mediums. So you know, comic books constantly, read books, television shows, movies, you know, all over the place. So there are these moments where my kids might get to see something before I do. And so um, I am a person that doesn't care about spoilers. So sometimes they'll, they'll talk to me and they will tell me something um, is the case. And then I go into that watching whatever that thing is thinking like, hey, you know, they told me this was X. I'm expecting to see X. And to me, the flat dinosaurs were not dinosaurs, right? <laughs> like that was the thing that like Pivum was like my kids in that moment where Pivum <laughs> is just like trying to, I, I don't know, you know, make me happy or something. And he's like, oh yeah, dinosaur, dinosaurs. And, and it's like, no, Pivum, those are not dinosaurs. Um, so, so that was my initial reaction to that. But thankfully, you know, I don't, I don't mean that to sound ungrateful because clearly we got some real dinosaur action <laughs> very close to that. And, and, and it all paid off and everything worked out. So flat dinosaurs, not high on your dinosaur tier list. Then. I don't think that they're dinosaurs, honestly, based on the description and the way I saw it in my head anyway. But, you know, well, uh, I, I mean, may, maybe they are in the world of, is it Lorelia? Did I say yeah. that one right? Yes. Yep. Maybe they are. Well, and until we saw them, I was picturing, you know, that meme that's the alligator, it's the big flat alligator. Yeah. I was literally picturing that. And alligators kind of are dinosaurs. And so it wasn't yeah. until it was like, no, flatter. <laughs> <laughs> and manta yeah, it was ray like a, it was like, like a manta ray yeah yeah and 
Now I will say that, um, so the only time I've ever been on a cruise in my life, I was, you know, 18 um, and, and I had just graduated high school and I went to the Bahamas and I uh, had to use a rope bridge uh, for this. Uh, it was at that Atlantis hotel that like nobody can ever afford to stay in or whatever. So I was just walking around there and they had uh, a rope bridge and I was walking over the rope bridge and I looked down in the water below that and there was, I don't I assume it's a manta ray, um, but it was it was massive. I mean, it was like you know, twelve feet uh, wide or something. And I was like, I thought it was like a statue or something at, at some point uh, until it started moving. Um, and uh, and I was uh, I, I took so many photos of that back in the digital can or like a, a, a disposable. It wasn't even digital; it's disposable oh. camera days. But uh, but yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. So they are very majestic creatures. Just I wouldn't categorize them as dinosaurs. Hmm. I admit I had initially gotten a little bit of like a crocodilian or a dinosuchus kind of vibe, which is really uh, if we say dino in the name, it gets to count. Crocodilian, <laughs> pretty much in my view. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, but... I am definitely fine with you know pterosaurs and. Uh, marine reptile, you know, prehistoric marine, like all of that. Definitely, I will, I will let you know join the party. But this one just didn't feel quite right, and so then I was, you know, slightly let down just because Piven got my hopes up. But then uh, we got some, uh, you know, Littlefoot, uh, you know, right after that. So, so we're all good. I'm just grateful that over the last, over the last couple years of children of verte and over the last several years that i've known adam as a friend that i've learned enough about adam's tastes in dinosaurs to be prepared for the moment because that took at least a few seconds of making sure i had the right things pulled up in dnt beyond <laughs> yeah so <laughs> I, I love it. You're 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 like uh, you know. Should I go with? Uh, here's the challenge rating of what I can and can't do. You know. So should I go with this one or that yep. one? But yeah, it was uh, uh, that that really was a, a great moment. And you know, I think the best times uh, when we're playing D and D in all of these games is when you really can just see and hear this stuff in your head. You know, and um, all of that. Uh, you know, th there was this extended scene that played out in my head of Silas and Neb and dinosaurs that was way, way longer than the montage allowed, you know, for, for that to happen. So um, it, it really was a, a great thing. And there have been few moments um, over the decades um, that uh, have, have rivaled that kind of thing, because yes, I've turned into a dinosaur before as a character. I have, uh, uh, you know, summoned them in various mm. games, you know, all the, all these other kind of things with, with old, uh, you know, other characters, but the way that the world of uh, children of Erte has been presented and how grounded, at least it, it really started out and how we've treated these abilities and everything. There was something extra special about um, you know, actually engaging with a dinosaur uh, within that context, especially since, I never expected them to actually exist anywhere when I started saying that. That was just Silas being, um, you know, uh, trying to trying to irritate uh, you know, people um, and, uh, and just be silly. Um, and so, you know, Deborah is a wonderful uh, GM. Let all that silliness pay off. Uh, it, it was a great moment. Just held that in the back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you might have been joking about dinosaurs. Deb was not. And if I she mean, was that... before, she wasn't after the goof began. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would a Patasaurus, the dinosaur that we actually got to experience a Silosaurus as, uh, be his first choice? Or are there further ambitions along the dino line? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, th there are... There are parts of Silas that are, uh, you know, obviously pretty close to to Adam's heart and you know the biggest part that I would throw out there is uh just that he's a fan of uh so many things and so I I am I am a fan of dinosaurs um and so uh so I would certainly say that uh you know it would be uh, epic and awesome to see you know any or 
uh, other, you know, I, I I have my own little like shorthand for what I refer to, uh, you know, dinosaurs as. So I, I call, uh, you know, uh, ankylosaurus, triceratops, those those kinds of creatures. I, I call them juggernauts most of the time, uh, and and uh, and I, I use long necks um, for um, you know, brachiosauruses, diplodocuses, you know. Um, th- th- those kind of things. So uh, no- nothing you'll fancy, but but those are those are what I say because no one ever knows what I mean if I used you know scientific names. <laughs> um, and so uh, so I would say that uh, I would definitely say that um, I would love to see some juggernauts of uh, some uh, some type either see them or you know who knows how powerful Neb is going to become. Like maybe you know Silas and or Neb can just tag team. As, uh, as some dinosaurs at some point. We'll see how it goes. Well, I don't think it's a spoiler for uh, people to know what I did, what spell that was that I cast. But I'm not joking. I'm looking at my character sheet right now, literally ahead of time. I'm like, okay, so this is the CR rating and this is what he, you know, I just came up with a whole list of here's animals that I think could be fun to turn into. And then here's all of the dinosaurs that I have access to. And the two that I was super excited about in advance, because you've mentioned the the Ankylosaurus a couple times, is that one the Triceratops? So those are top of my list, along with giant crocodile, Brontosaurus, uh, Stegosaurus, and then I also had the elephant and the mammoth on there because I'm like, yes. you know, if I can't get a dinosaur in there, maybe I can just get big, just Perfect. big, 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 big. And then when well, Deb did that, I was just like, well, all right, let's that's do that's this. it, that's yep. it. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm just so immersed in all this stuff right now too because you know off topic, but you know that's what an after show's for, but. I, uh, I have been, uh, you know, on and off for, um, you know, especially a couple of months at this point, I've been working on a Merck Borg pack that is essentially Ooh. dinosaur centric, um, that is, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, inspired by the Jurassic Park, uh, you know, franchise, but also things like Dino Riders. Uh, so it is dinosaurs in the modern world. Um, and uh, I'm actually really, really excited uh, it's starting to come together, you know, really, really well. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, I do. There's something about dinosaurs that have fascinated me. I re- just explicitly remember when I was, you know, five years old in kindergarten, and um, the very first thing I remember drawing because I, I, I do a lot of art also um, is uh, the very first thing was a brontosaurus. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was the very first thing that I, I you know, I might have drawn other things before. That's what I remember drawing first. And I think even at the time, somebody else in the class had drawn one. Um, and um, I remember thinking, which, you know, maybe this uh, says something about me that, that I didn't want to get out there. But I remember thinking, I was like, no, that doesn't look like a brontosaurus. It's like, I can do a lot, way better than that. And, uh, and you know, I was a five-year-old. And then I, uh, like, remember looking at reference photos and everything, you know, and, and like, drawing the brontosaurus. I think my mom still has it somewhere. I need to. I need to find that at some point. Oh, it's so cute. That's a parent. Okay, but core. really, really, really serious. Very official on the on the air today. Question: Is that Mark Borkham looking for play testers? Okay, I'm super <laughs> glad because I I was watching Sam's face and their face was going through what was going through my head, which is which is okay. I would like to subscribe to this newsletter. How do I do this? <laughs> yeah, What's going on? Yeah, this yeah, is now I the will, on the Morkborg uh, after yeah, show. <laughs> I, I will I will definitely definitely let everybody know when when we're ready for prime time. And but I've uh, let's put it this way: I've made a lot of progress because that is a uh, that is a wonderful base game uh, that is uh, really really set up for uh, those those hacks like that. So yeah. uh, lots of fun. And then I love, uh, you know, uh, there's uh, what I'm going for is a little bit of a Borderlands feel, like where it's uh, you're trying to capture wealth and, uh, of course, you know, leverage and completely exploit everything that's going on with these dinosaurs that have uh, showed up um, you know, kind of out of nowhere. And, um, and so, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I, I think it's, it's going to have a nice vibe to it. I have enjoyed playing it with my kids so far. So, uh, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll provide updates when I have those and you two are definitely on the list. Thank you. Excellent. Good. I will hold you to that chat. It's documented. We have mm-hmm. it. Now. Mm-hmm. We got it. Mm-hmm. We got it. How about Neb, Lauren? What dinosaur would she most like? Cause you have this whole list of things you can and like things that you wanted to do for Silas. Does Neb? Does Neb have a favorite dinosaur that 
that she'd want to turn into? So the interesting thing about Neb uh, is from the beginning, she's had no, she didn't come into the beginning of this game with a lot of like, this is my favorite insert blank. So it's been a lot of her finding the, the drive and the ambition to, oh, this is my favorite. I don't think she had a favorite dinosaur until Silas was talking about uh, the Ankylosaurus. And so even though turning him into the, the Brontosaurus type thing was super, super fun, I think that became her favorite because that's what she's been thinking about the whole time. Um, and there's there's something about... Because when we played the game and where our characters played characters in Silas's game, uh, and I went through the process of like, well, what would Neb want to play? Well, Neb would want to play something that can't get hit. Paladin, there we go. So what kind of dinosaur <laughs> would Neb want to be? Ankylosaurus, there we go. So that's that's what she's learned is she's squishy and turning into something with armor is a good idea. So yeah. And there... They call them tankalosauruses for a reason. They don't call them that, or unless I'm they. I mean, I am they. So I have called it. them that many times. <laughs> there we go. See? See? Yeah. We got this. Uh, I, Given that I think most of Neb's wild shapes have tended toward the fragile side, that seems like one yeah. of the first kind of tanky approaches we've seen. A little bit, we got yeah. the occasional Neb moose, but we get, we get a lot of Neb rat. Mm -hmm. We got some Neb cat. The cat, yeah. It depends on the need, right? Well, and so oh, it's so weird thinking about some of this stuff. Like the wild shape for me when I was first building her was always supposed to be a utility because she's not that kind of druid. Um, so she was supposed to be the the other type of druid. Um, and then the wild shape was like a fun thing and something that she could do in in. Uh, places more in role playing context. So yeah, that's why all of her wild shapes have been th these. She's encountered this creature, and so she knows it real well. She's uh, she knows how to turn into this one. She wants to talk to a certain thing, that kind of thing. I don't think she's figured out how to do the be a. Uh, I think she's been in wild shape once in a fight. And she was a wolf at the time and didn't know what she was doing and missed with all of her bites. But like that, that was, that was a little, you know, oh no, she, um, what did she turn into before she we got killed by the bull bulls? at one point, right? Like to That's true. To fight Talrun. Yeah. yeah. Well, she was going to, I don't, oh yeah, yeah she did no actually finally, happen. but it was mostly just to like back everybody up and, and block the door. Um, and she did turn into something on the beach just before we all got eaten by the the Pepto Bismol stuff, but I don't remember what it was because <laughs> she was she literally was that way for about five seconds and then got dropped. So, so <laughs> no, I don't think she's figured she hasn't figured that out yet. It's it's all utility for her and it's all like fun things that she can do. Like oh yeah, I can you know climb across this thing or get into this small bit. So she. She doesn't have the uh, the backstory that most D&D druids do and where they kind of know about, like, bears. <laughs> Couldn't tell you which bear is best. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, also, the thing I was able to do to Silas is just way more powerful creatures uh, just because of how those kind of things work. But then, you know, you, you can't think too well, which is the, the trade-off. So si Silas, you know, the way my headcanon goes is since Silas has been working so hard on that mind palace like thing of like being able to separate stuff, like sure, he couldn't communicate, he could, but like he remembers it still. Like there's yeah. something that like he, he still like remembers the sensations of uh, that's my head canyon for how that worked out. I mean, I'm willing to roll with that. I didn't even, by, by the way, this was completely, you know, not on purpose, but I did not realize <laughs> that, like, th like th this, this is like, you know, like pr proving it, right? Like, uh, I, I'm not a, I'm not a poser, uh, when it comes to the, to the, uh, you know, terrible lizards. Um, so, uh, yeah. So it's so anyway. Uh, just realized that I was wearing that. I love it. I love it so Understanding much. Understanding the assignment in fullness. <laughs> it's so ingrained. <laughs> yeah. I also have from my notes for those uh, Neb Wild Shape enjoyers. 
uh, the Pepto-Bismol fight featured Neb Ox, as did uh, the Talran fight. Uh, we have occasionally seen a combat Neb Wolf, although I have here Neb Wolf blames the new fangs, they are newfangled. So yeah. it may not have been absolute tip-top combat effectiveness, but we have seen some combat wild shapes. Yeah. Out of Neb. They, they that was have fighting all... an all-knowing space baby. Wow, notes get weird sometimes in uh, role-playing games. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The, the especially the the ones where you look back at them and go, wait, what? So yeah, the the wolf in combat was definitely that first time, and it was with the Morlock creatures. Um, and so that that was fun, and and it was like in that moment, those wolves that we had encountered were the first creature that she had really looked at that she could picture well enough. And so was it like the most optimal wild shape in that moment? Absolutely not. But like, you know, that's half the fun of this kind of role playing is like, well, she knows a rat. She thinks she can do a wolf. But once you're a wolf, what the heck do you do with the claws and the and the everything? So, yeah. And then the two times the ox happened, well, the once was so that she could block the door and and basically just like go on tall run. And then the second time was because she had already turned into it and that was like the beefiest thing that she could think of and it still wasn't enough not enough hit points <laughs> not, yeah not quite enough but that's okay that's 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 that that's that's my my little neb she's just wild shaping for fun not for profit it's the best reason frankly yeah. It's uh, it's been fun to do the whole I don't turn into things unless I can see them, study them, that kind of thing. Like it's it's a little harder, but this is the perfect story for it and it really adds a lot of flavor to that kind of uh that part of being a druid. So I've really appreciated that cuz this is the first time I've played a druid um in any kind of lengthy campaign. Um, and so being able to kind of dive in in that way has been really gratifying, even if it doesn't work out all the time. Strong disagree. It works out every time. <laughs> no notes. I didn't know this was your first long form druid. How are you finding just the druid experience compared to other classes that you play? Um... I, it's super fun. I've been really excited about playing the the subclass that I am. Um, so that was kind of the main, main goal. Um, I knew a bunch about kind of the mechanics of it because I've DM'd for some druids in long-term campaigns. So I felt a little more prepared to deal with the complexity because if for, for those that don't know, druids, they can kind of do everything plus all the animals. So it, there's a lot going on. And so knowing in advance what I was going to have to prep for and, and look at. Um, the interesting thing, the, the hard thing, when we first got into the game and with playing Neb, I was not looking for healing spells because I was a healer in a previous life. Um, and then, and, and so going through her spell list and picking out spells that were good, uh, that were things that I think would be fun for her to know and things that would be mechanically good for the team and things that would be, all right, this will come up. And then I kept running into these healing spells. It's just like, well, I should take this other one and everything. And then, um, and then, yeah, I just kind of gave up and had fun with it. So it's been, it's been real fun. It's been fun to like lean into some of the parts of being a Druid and then just kind of, not have to worry about some of it like no i don't have the catalog I, I don't know all the wild shapes in the world you know i don't uh there's there's still stuff as a druid that she hasn't done yet because it just hasn't come up and see she hasn't learned how to do it which are there's a couple things that are like core druid things that she just hasn't done and it's been a joy so yeah i've been having Not the fun. catalog but the cat Kind of, well, kind of big important. fluffy cat. Do you think we've seen a little bit of subclass neb? Do you think we're going to see more, especially as the wild shapes kind of gotten more predominance as like the signature thing that Neb's been doing? Oh yeah, I love that subclass. Assuming I've correctly predicted it, and I've been fooled before. No, I think at this point it's pretty obvious. I, I, I mean, I'm just gonna say it's a circle of stars. Like it's, it's pretty obvious. Um. There are there's still a couple things she hasn't done in that subclass either. Like um 
which I'm some of it I'm hoping we get a chance to do and some of it has been hinted at but she's never really she's never done it specifically in game um but she's hinted at having accidentally done it that's that's my roundabout way of talking about that um but yeah there's there's a couple things about that subclass that um I, I think the thing that I don't get to do as often as I wish I did is, is she does, she can like cast Guiding Bolt every five seconds. Like when your circle of stars through it, they just give you Guiding Bolt and they say, but don't worry about like spell slots, just Guiding Bolt everything. And I don't get a chance to do that as often as I want to. So, so yeah, maybe, maybe she'll come out more guns blazing with, with the, uh, with the, the Guiding Bolt. Hey Deb, if you're watching this. Guiding bolt opportunities. <laughs> Listen, Deb, enemies from afar. I'm I, I, I'm going to say Deb is an amazing DM, and the uh, the the problems that Neb has had surviving combat have been a hundred percent Neb, uh, and and not even really her fault. Like a lot of the stuff is, oh, we're in the middle of talking to something, and so she just happens to be up front. She has learned don't be up front during the combat. <laughs> But she just keeps ending up there. So yeah, Deb does an amazing job of like these really varied, awesome combats and letting us do all sorts of things. And Deb just is in the wrong place at the right time a lot of the time. Fair enough. I'm kind of curious now, Adam, is this your first long form bard? Ooh. You just like uh, slip into that like some comfy slippers. Yeah, no, I've, I've played several bards over the years, uh, long form. Now, it is, uh, so, you know, since we're certainly at a point and um, I keep so many secrets um, every single day um, that um, I love it when I can just, you know, spill beans about something that's not going to get me, you know, in a lawsuit. Um, so I uh, I will go ahead and share since, uh, you know, Lauren has done so. Uh, I get the question all the time. Uh, people can't figure out what Silas's subclass is, and there is a reason for that is because it is not anything that you're going to find in a book. Uh, it is uh, it is very much so, uh, you know, kind of as the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide talks about that you can uh, kind of mix and match um, so, some elements to create a, a subclass that is specific to, uh, you know, the campaign setting that you're playing in. And uh, what this one is called is it is the, uh, it is the College of Spoons. Um, and it, it means, uh, it, it's like, you know, there is no spoon, um, is, is the whole uh, concept behind that. So the College of Spoons is um, uh, something that obviously incorporates a little bit more uh, you know, uh, telekinesis and psychic ability, um, and it kind of layers that on. The, the base that it starts with is actually the, uh, the College of Dance, and that was a uh, that was a little bit of an update that happened when that material came out, uh, because um, you know up to that point uh, the the College of Spoons had had some uh, you know different ways that Silas was uh, doing some of the unarmed attacks. Because I knew I knew from the beginning that Silas was going to be you know flying superhero style, and um, and so I wanted to be able to. Uh, get up and, and do some, you know, punching and, you know, uh, all, all those kind of things. And so there were some other ways that uh, we were handling that initially when the College of Dance came out, it, uh, uh, you know, provided kind of a, a much better mechanic for that. Um, and so uh, we kind of just uh, kind of swapped that out for, for what we were going to do. But really, it didn't have much of an impact on things because I had not, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to use those abilities really yet anyway. And so uh, it, it worked out well with the timing of that. But yeah, the, the College of Spoons is what uh, what Silas is. And, um, and it's going to be, uh, you know, dance based um, and, and flavored more with uh, that psychic uh, part of the power set. I think that's perfect because bards and all their their powers are so ingrained in like the magical secrets idea of just you get to steal things from other classes so the the idea of like creating a bard subclass that takes from a whole bunch of other subclasses is kind of perfect yeah yeah and and it really is it's like you know uh, many of the because the college of dance uh, since we are higher than this level um, i don't know if people know exactly what level we are because you can't you can't always accurately guess like you can you can know at least what we are a lot of the times but 
Um, there are many times, as Lauren was referring to, that we're not using abilities because um, it's not like a video game where we're like, oh, we've got these new abilities. I'm going to go hit uh, the trigger A now you know, uh, to try that ability out. Like we, we, we look for the times, but, um, but we're definitely at least, uh, you know, six level. And um, with that, there is an ability that allows, um, you know, essentially the evasion uh, concept for a group of people that are around uh, the, the College of, of Dance Bard. And, uh, you know, honestly, uh, that fit better for what I was doing with Spoons than I think it does for dance, because I have a hard time visualizing what the College of Dance Bard is doing to make everybody evasive. Whereas with Silas, it is literally, he's putting up, you know, like a telekinetic shield, um, you know, like uh, instinctively around people. Oh, you've so, never uh, so seen yeah. how distracting dance can be, have yeah, you? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, I mean, I, I have. I, I've I've married somebody. <laughs> um, so, uh, but uh, but yeah. So I. Uh, so so ultimately, though, uh, yeah, the College of Spoons, and uh, and then the other subclass that it uh, you know draws some abilities from uh, to to kind of uh, you know uh, change the loadout. There is the uh, Psychic Warrior uh, because the Psychic Warrior has you know a lot of uh, telekinetic abilities later on top thank you i have i have been silently wondering forever what silas is made out of yeah well and and you still don't know what he's made out of because we didn't talk about ancestry but um but yeah your ancestry uh, yeah. is probably still harder for people to guess than some it, some of us are real easy at this point and some of yeah. us are harder so well, that's why I wanted to throw a bone with what was going on with the subclass there, because I keep getting the questions, keep, people keep trying to figure it out. And I'm like, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to figure that one out because it is something custom for, for our campaign. Yeah. I well, never would have gotten there on my own. Yeah. Well, and I, I think we're far enough in the campaign at this point that like, it's still fun to have the secrets dribble out, but it's also now fun, you know, both in and out of game to have people know so it's it's fun for the audience to basically have some of their their guesses confirmed or not and it's also fun for the characters to kind of sink into accepting what they're doing and kind of be a little more uh capable about using their powers they're they're no longer very hesitant so it's no longer like it, it doesn't take quite as long to figure out how to do certain things um, and I think that's just kind of a natural progression of this, this campaign of, of, you know, the, the ball rolling down the hill, things are starting to get real fast. Um, yeah. yeah and and like, I, I just, I love that concept, uh, even, you know, especially when Eberron came out, um, I remember, uh, you know, talked to Mr. Keith Baker about this many times that, uh, he, he beat me out on that submission. Um, but, um, I did finally admit, I was, I was like, you know, like this Eberron. I think it's got some legs. It's, it's pretty good. Um, but, um, but yeah, like I loved with Eberron the way that it talked about, um, you know, being able, being willing to describe and flavor uh, the abilities that you're using, the spells that you're using, et cetera. And so I have loved seeing how that has happened with all of the players in the group uh, across all these characters. And, you know, it's just something simple like, uh, you know, Featherfall is an easy one. So, uh, you know, Silas obviously has the Featherfall spell, but um, that has always seemed like, you know, I'm Mary Poppins, uh, you know, like more like that, um, you know, kind of kind of feel to it uh, when I've used it in games previously. But um, but with Silas using it and that, you know, psychic focus, it makes a lot of sense that, it, uh, you know, even on the character sheet um, that I have for Silas, instead of saying Featherfall, it says telekinetic net. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like it, it's that idea that you know you're you're falling, but you're uh, you're you're getting caught before you you get to the bottom of wherever you're going to land. And um, and so th that reflavoring of spells has been by far my favorite uh, you know aspect, uh, at least mechanically. Uh, and and I guess you can argue that's not mechanically, but it's taking the mechanics of the game and providing them. Kind of a new lens to see them through and i have loved seeing the creativity that everybody's had uh, in the entire cast and group with that it's also real gratifying to be able to dig hard into that kind of customization because in those moments where 
there is an ability or a spell or something that Neb does that is a crossover to something else other characters of mine have done, being able to flavor it in a different way can make it feel like something different. So, um, you know, I've, I've mechanically tried to keep Neb as her own character, but there's just going to be some stuff that makes sense for her to be able to do or have or, you know, access to that other characters have. And so being able to change how it, at, at the very least, uh, looks or sounds or, you know, uh, any anything of the flavor of it, even if mechanically it's the same, has made it feel more grounded in this is this is how this, you know, this character has a fire fist. Yeah, I, I love, uh, you know, it, it's a great example of what you're talking about right there, because we talked about this many times, especially early on. A lot of times when you get uh, groups together to play these games, there's that discussion of what, what role are you going to be? Many of us have played so many video games at this point, uh, or, or, you know, maybe played in a lot of the, the older age of, of these games as they were starting out, uh, that you, you've got your, you know, holy trinities, um, who's dealing damage, who's healing, uh, you know, tanking things and um and so we talked about that and i love where we came to with it which was just like you know hey and we're all figuring this out as characters and you know whatever is appropriate for that character to potentially try and and the truth is just like my silly brontosaurus drawing story that i did earlier the reason that i drew a brontosaurus is because i saw somebody else do it right and so it's like uh, it, it makes a ton of sense uh, to, for, uh, you know, Neb to, to say, you know, hey, Silas, I, I saw that you healed uh, like that. You know, maybe I can do that. And there have been, uh, you know, instances of that going on multiple times. But then I also love how we have kind of settled into uh, just uh, our own skin as the characters. And so, uh, you know, Neb is at least starting to get a strong feeling of, where the power's coming from, or at least, uh, you know, she might not know what that thing is, but like how it works and where it's coming from. And with Silas, the thing that I've done is that, yeah, he's done some healing, but I love that concept of I'm flavoring it that like, maybe you're not like fully getting healed like all the time. It's just, he's mentally making it like he's, he's somehow, you know, incidentally reaching out with his mind to make you not feel the pain or to uh, just give you some adrenaline or, you know, what, whatever that is. And maybe Silas doesn't even understand that, but, but he's starting to, uh, uh, again, you know, figure that out. And it is uh, the exact same spell, you know, cure wounds. Like I, I, we've both used that spell and they come across in the game really, really different. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Though making one feel healed might apparently have moderate success on a portal to rock uh, rock spider friendo you ever have those moments in a game and where you know kind of as your the, the player knows we should move along we should go you know we should continue to move along but your character is so fixated on something I don't know about you, Adam, but it was very clear to me and, and Nev that like that chill rock, we were going to stand around and try to fix this chill rock no matter how long it took, oh, even yes. though Lauren's in the back of my head going, we're getting towards like, we should, we should move on. We should go do yeah. a thing. And, but no, no yeah. spider, rock spider. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. That, that uh, genuinely happens, uh, you know, uh, pretty, pretty frequently. And, you know, our group, uh, you know, we've played together for, Gosh, like how long has it been now? Like six years at least? I think, like, I think so. With yeah, so, a, a core group of us, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, long, long time at this point. And, um, and it, you know, I uh, adore uh, playing with all of you, um, but I also know what everybody, you know, values when we come together to play. And so, um, you know, we are a group that is going to role play long rest watches. And I have been parts of groups in the past that would never touch that with a, a 30 foot pole. Like they just, you know, never would. And so um, I, I do love how um, everyone is committed to playing the character to that point. And it even helps me because there are definitely times as a player, I'm doing the same thing of like, uh, you know, and especially when we start getting closer to that, uh, you know, second hours end, I'm like, well, okay, we've got to find a stopping point. And 
and, and maybe we should push ahead to this, but then I see that, oh, wait a minute, you know, Neb is, is not going to let this go um, because, you know, she actually wouldn't let that thing go. And I would so much rather you play Neb like what Neb would actually do because it may, that's the thing that makes Neb and Maeve and Feruza and Robin and everybody like feel like, I feel like I know these characters three years in here or, you know, almost three years or how, however long it's been. Um, like that I, I like them. Like I, yeah. you know, I, I, I wish that they were like real that I could like sit and talk with or whatever, you know? And so, um, but that's the reason that they feel so real is because that's how humans do. We get fixated on things. We, uh, we make bad decisions sometimes for love. We, you know, like all those kind of things come together. And, um, and that's why you're all just brilliant uh, you know, role players. And it's been wonderful to play with you all these years. Well, I'm going to second all that and include you in that. And one of the reasons, uh, the the other side of that is uh, I always appreciate how you are very clear in the role playing of when, uh, when you're trying to either help move along somewhere or no, we're going to take the second or, you know, this we've played long enough now that we're all very attuned to each other's cues of all right i'm i want to help you do a thing you know i want to let you i'm going to give you space to do a thing all right i'm gonna you know how do we help you now move along from a thing and you all are incredibly good at at um saying that in a myriad of different ways often in character so that the, everything feels good like okay we're gonna spend a moment and try to fix rock spider but there's going to be a point in where we're all going to kind of communicate okay we've kind of done everything we should let's come to a decision and move along so that that is one of the reasons that i love playing with all of you i, I just have to interject here uh, for everyone at home and say that i've known lauren now for eight or nine years i get like i think um, i'm bad with yeah. time but I, but i think it's probably been <laughs> it's a flat that. circle yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter it, yeah um unlike flat dinosaurs um but uh <laughs> But uh, with that, um, I can say that there has not been a single time, I was actually looking for it right there to see if it was going to be the first, but there has not been a single time where she has received a compliment and she has not mirrored back a compliment of her own. <laughs> and more people in the world should be like Lauren Urban. I just want, I want, I want to highlight that. She is a fountain of kindness and um and uh it is like i said i'm i'm gushing right now but uh but but it, it, it's always been just this thing that stands out to me that she has never i have never witnessed her accept a compliment without also returning a compliment and, and those are the kind of things we we learn when we you know are in grade school uh but too many of us forget um as as we uh, continue down See now, now I'm I'm like, well, should I do what I normally do, or should I not, <laughs> and just accept the compliment? And this can be the one time. But now is it? Now I'm just going to sit here and second guess myself. Sam, help me. <laughs> well, what Sam if I interrupt. enthusiastically co-sign everything you all have both said about each other and engage in a distraction brought to you by Maverick? Too, uh, who asks what Silas and Neb's favorite snacks are. And just since we've been talking about how well y'all know each other, Adam, what's Neb's favorite snack? Neb, what Silas oh, is? Yeah, I love this um, curveball. Um, so um, I've got to give my thought process here because I know that Neb ha uh, grew up in a bakery, um, you know, uh, presumably baking and at least being around it a whole lot. So um, I'm going to assume it's a baked good. Um, and so I am going to whittle that down to like pastry. I don't eat a lot of pastry, so I don't know their names. Um, so I'm going to have to be more general there and just say like, uh, a, a crepe, a creep, um, like w whatever those things are called. I'm going to say a crepe of some sort. So you're not wrong. Definitely. Some of her favorite snacks are stuff that she's made in the bakery. Um, like a lot of things before she got on the train, she didn't have a favorite 
specifically. Mm -hmm. She's just like, look, all the things that I made. Uh, it, but it was definitely some of the baked goods that she learned how to make from her family. So stuff that she was told the story about and here's the recipe and it would have been, uh, yeah, crepes and, um, uh, croissants and croissants. bagels and stuff like that. Um, and now I don't think she's realized it yet, but she's going to be eating good berries for the rest of her life. Yeah, she's developed a taste. Yeah. Also, so, she's talked to everything, and I don't think she can. She hasn't yeah. had this realization yet, but I don't think she can bring herself to eat anything that she has talked to. That definitely makes sense. Um, but you know, that's going to be tough because that kind of includes plants too. Yep. Um, yep. And so, like you know, I guess it's got to be you know harvested from the plant maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, speaking she... of bagels, though, like I don't oh. understand why nobody's ever told me this. Um, but like, I don't eat, like I said, I don't really eat you know, baked goods like that. Um, but, and I, I definitely do not eat bagels, but I was at a fondue restaurant the other day and they had like one of the dippers was like the everything bagel seasoning. Oh. Are you familiar with what this stuff is? That is the greatest stuff that I've ever, like, it's, <laughs> it's like just salt flakes and pepper and like you know poppy seeds or something yeah it's amazing it's absolutely amazing it almost made me want to eat a bagel yeah everything bagels are a classic yeah. they're they're incredibly good incredibly popular there's no wrong bagel mm -hmm. we support all bagel enjoyers i couldn't speak to the origins of the everything bagel the specifics as i recall are disputed. This has nothing to do with having previously researched what an everything baby girl comes from. Yeah. Here's, no here's my suggestion. Have. Go watch everything everywhere all at once and then you'll know exactly where the everything bagel <laughs> came from. It's perfect. It's great. Uh, as for S Silas's, I think easy because he's just said it. It's barbecue. <laughs> Silas, Silas is yeah. a fan of barbecue. So Silas misses the barbecue. Silas, that's that's what Silas wants. He wants to be able to just dig into the, a big rack of ribs or or something. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. You, that that was definitely an easy one. <laughs> well done, excellent. I, lo I love that we're calling that a snack though, um, because he probably would, to be honest. Like you know, <laughs> it's like you know, I don't I don't know. Most of the time, I consider that like a meal. But like no barbecue as snack is is something I am very in favor of. I mean, I consider anything a snack as long as you can have it at any point in the day. And okay, yes. <laughs> Silas, Silas, and Adam strike me as someone who could have a uh, barbecue for pretty much any part of the day. So, yes, yeah. yes, I absolutely could. There's a follow up about type of barbecue, and I will just say all. Like I uh, am very, very equal opportunity when it comes to the different sauces. I believe that I like savory more than sweet is, is where I'll you know, uh, throw out that preference. But, um, but yeah, de definitely a fan. Um, and I'm a huge hot sauce fan, um, even though I'm uh, kind of, uh, you know, a baby when it comes to, um, I, I can't take heat, but I love hot sauces. So like they can't be like too hot. But, you know, if you get in that cayenne pepper, Frank's is the bet, you know, all that stuff. Uh, big, big fan of that. So I, I eat that on barbecue every day, too. One of these days, I, I'm, I'm wearing the Buffalo shirt. One of these days, yes. we're going to meet up in Buffalo. I'm going to take That's you to it. all my favorite <laughs> wing places. It's going to be great. We've been talking Not about Not the that tourist places. Yeah, I love Not it. Yeah. I mean, you do the anchor bar because you got to do the anchor bar sure. because it's, you know, it's like you're going to be in Buffalo. You, you go do, but no, you go to Duff's and you go to Nino's. Oh, so good. Anyway, this is, yeah. I, I know exactly where to take Adam and Silas. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Fortunately, we have had all of that established, uh, assuming, you know, Silas ever returns to Erte and uh, doesn't just want to boop around and be a superhero. Hmm. We'll see. We'll I mean, do happens. we know that our powers don't work in Erte yet? I don't know if we know that. How could we possibly know that until, yeah. you know, you just got to do the experiment sometimes. Like the, the end of, you know, the story arc here is going to be Silas in a black trench coat with black shades, you know, kind of reaching down to the ground and then just zooming up into the air with his coattails flapping in the wind. I love it. There was, there was a moment where I was like, wait, why a black trench coat? Where is it going? <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
absolutely. <laughs> there's there's a couple of I, so there's a couple of things that make me think that we could possibly keep some of our powers. One of them being we know at the very least that Julian was able to cut a way back into the veil. Um, but we never really asked Ivy, like, while well, you were in Airtate, did you have any of your powers? Did you have well when we had we had time, she started turning like a kind of kind of cold shoulder, if you know what I mean. So I you know, I don't know if we're gonna get to ask her. As it's on Neb's list of things to do to go back to once we were done saving everything is to go back and talk talk to Ivy, talk to Pivum, talk to talk to a lot of things. But yeah, we we really don't know. And it'll be interesting if we find out before before and if we're given the opportunity to go home, if that changes anyone's minds. Yeah. Cause I don't know. We're just going to have to see. And unfortunately we don't have too much time to talk about the various ruler related conspiracies that can have come up from these past few episodes. Mm. But I would be remiss if I did not take one more of our fan questions. This one coming to us from Twitter from one Obo Lauren. Ooh. Will we finally find out about the towels? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the towels thing definitely started as a hitchhiker's, um, you know, reference. And then it was just like quadrupled down. Um, so, um, you know, Silas uh, is, uh, doesn't, isn't really subtle about a lot of things. Um, so, so yeah, it's, uh, when, uh, when, when you find something that, uh, makes people laugh, you go with it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for whatever reason, the towels thing, um, has stuck around. I, um, I actually, you know, sometimes, uh, especially probably because I'm in the Southeast and if I'm out at, uh, you know, a bookstore or something, I, uh, you know, occasionally have people come up like, Hey, you're that bad eye guy, right? And I'm like, yeah, I have a name. It's Adam. Uh, how, how you doing? Um, but uh, but yeah, when when they do that, they're like, um, so uh, like the thing that I get sometimes now is like, so what's Silas's deal with towels? <laughs> I, I've had at least half a dozen people ask me like, so what's this Silas guy's deal with towels? And I'm like, I'm like, it's nothing weird. Like it's just. It just became a thing that, yeah. we, we, that, that and, happened. And like a lot of things, it, it might have started as a fun thing and a funny reference. And then you took it and you made it super uh, sentimental by making towel or origami for Pivum as as he went off into the world. It was, it was so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Deb does a good job of uh, setting up those, you know, uh, kinds of, uh, of, of cues uh, for, for people. She, she gives the space for it, uh, yeah. which is uh, is a really, really good thing that she does. Well, she makes the pass, but y'all dunk the ball. I think I did a sports thing correctly. You did. did. That was pretty good. You did. Yes. Cheers unto you. you. <laughs> Fantastic. And on that success, that will do it for our Hoopy Fruits here. So don't forget where your towel is, and don't forget to tune in here at Demi Plane RPG next week as the children of Erte make their way deeper into the air realm of Etna. But for us, I think we have been on air quite long enough, so thank you both again for joining me and for doing the important job that we, the audience, always want to do, which is love on each of you, respectively. You got that going. I personally very much appreciate it. Continue it as you continue through the game, but... Until I'm just time. really glad that we did not uh, hit the rulers thing because this was about to be like some Charlie Day like conspiracy board, you know, meme stuff because that stuff is weird and wacky and I have no idea. I, like player Adam Silas has no idea what is actually going on with this. So I can't wait to find out. Lauren so. has a tiny uh, couple of inklings. Um, Neb innocently thinks that everything is what she has been saying. And so... Uh, Lauren just is going to go with what Neb thinks because it's way easier, which is, <laughs> no, everything's fine. It's fine. <laughs> there you go. One last question fine. answered. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry. It's fine. She's fine. But if you're curious, check in next week because until then, we're going off the air today. Bye, everyone. <laughs>